When I was 16 years old, I got my first cell phone. It was a normal phone, one that blinked red when I had a new text message. First time I got one of the messages, I didn't think much of it. Her, I love you. Me, I think you have the wrong number, sorry, lol. Her, no, I love you. Me, really, well, who are you? Her, your true love. I showed the message to my friend Kristen. She just laughed and shrugged her shoulders. I didn't reply to the mysterious girl's text message and promptly forgot all about it. I figured the poor girl had probably been trying to date some guy and he gave her a wrong number to get rid of her. When I was 17 years old, I got a new Blackberry phone, which had the same kind of red blinking light for new messages. I also had my first girlfriend. Her name was Tina. One day in the middle of class, I noticed a red light blinking inside my backpack. Making sure the teacher wasn't looking, I pulled out my Blackberry held it under my desk and read the message. Her, where have you been? Me, who is this? Her, I missed you, baby. You miss me too? Me, sorry, wrong number. Her, don't play with me, sweet thing. Me, seriously, you have the wrong number. I have a girlfriend. Bye. There was no response. Two days later, I received another message. Her, Jerry? She knew my name. I don't know how, but, but she knew my name. I showed the message to my girlfriend. Tina took the phone out of my hand and replied with an angry message. Listen, this is my boyfriend's phone. He doesn't know you and he doesn't want to know you. You have the wrong number. And if you don't lay off, we'll go to the cops. Stop texting him. Well, at the time, it seemed to do the trick. The mystery girl never replied and I thought that was the end of it. When I was 18 years old, I got a new iPhone that went bing whenever I received a new message. I had broken up with Tina. The very next day after Tina and I split up, the messages started again. Her, I've missed you. I stared at my phone in disbelief. It couldn't be the same person, could it? Maybe it was just Tina trying to freak me out. Me, who is this? Her, you know who this is. I'm glad you got rid of her. Me, who? Her, that scumbag you called a girlfriend. Seeing you with her always made me mad. Me. Listen, you weirdo, stop texting me. I don't know who you are or if this is some kind of joke, but stop it. Her. No, you listen, bitch. You're mine. And if I see you with another girl, you'll regret it. By the way, you leave your curtains open at night so I can watch you? I was sitting on my bed as I read the text message. Horrified, I immediately turned to look out my window. My bedroom was on the ground floor. Anyone standing in the backyard could see straight into my bedroom. I jumped up and pulled the curtains shut. Then I called my friend Kristen again and I told her what happened. She came right over and convinced me to go to the police. When we arrived at the police station, the officers were very helpful. I showed them my phone and they managed to track the girl's number. They ended up finding a battered old Blackberry phone in an abandoned building about two blocks from my house. There was gooey stuff all over it, as well as on the floor. The phone was registered to a young man who had gone missing a few months before. He had still not been found. I changed my phone number, and for a month or so, everything was fine. One night, I went to a party at a friend's house. A lot of the guests were playing drinking games, and quite a few had passed out on the couch or were thrown up in the bathroom. At the end of the night, I realized that my backpack was missing. I went around the house, searching for it everywhere, but I couldn't find it. I saw Kristen coming out of the bathroom and I begged her to help me find my backpack. Eventually, we went outside and found the backpack lying on the front lawn. All of the contents were scattered around on the grass. We started gathering everything up. Luckily, all of my money and credit cards were still there. The only thing that was missing was my lip balm, which I honestly couldn't care less about. I figured one of the drunk girls had probably been rummaging through my backpack to borrow some lip balm and had accidentally spilled everything out. Kristen and I decided to call a taxi, but when I took out my phone, I realized that someone had been using it to send a bunch of text messages. The last text was just a bunch of gibberish. I had an uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach as I scrolled through the messages. I was right. Some drunk guy had been playing around with my phone. He had been answering messages posing as me. A whole conversation had taken place. Her, hey sweetie, haven't talked in a while. Him, uh, you're right, sup sexy. Her, how are you? Him, good, you? 
Her, I'm just sitting here thinking about you. I missed you. Did you miss me? Him, LOL, you're funny. Where are you? Her, you know I can't tell you that. You already went to the cops once. Him, cops? Her, you think I didn't know? It took me a while to forgive you for that. Almost as long as it took me to find your new number. Did you miss me? Him, LOL. Sure. Her, I can see you're not at home tonight. What are you doing? Him, you can see me? Her, no, Jerry, I can see where you are on GPS. That's not your house. Him, at a friend's place, drinking. Her, are you drunk? Wait there, I will come and pick you up. Nine minutes later, the drunk guy finally replied. Him, okay, sorry, this is not Jerry. I found his phone and started messing around and replying when you texted. Her, you stole Jerry's phone? Him, no, I borrowed it. Her, I'm coming down there right now. What have you done with Jerry? Him, nothing. Don't come over here. You're a freak, yo. Her, I'll kill you if you hurt him. Her again, answer me. You better not have hurt him. Her again, bro, you're dead. Him, is that you in the red car? Dude, you're freaking weird. I'm going inside. Him again, WTF, was that you? Him again, K, stop, I'll leave the... P H E G O O Y two three six two zero G M or or something. It was unintelligible. There were three more text messages like this with letters and symbols, as if someone had mashed the keyboard with their fingers. As I finished reading, the phone vibrated in my hand. Her, Jerry. I hope you found your phone and backpack okay. I have the jerk who tried to steal them. Don't worry, he won't bother you again. By the way, your lip balm tastes so good. I can't wait to taste it off your lips. Well, I freaked out and immediately called 911, trying to explain the gravity of the situation. A patrol car arrived about 10 minutes later, and the police officers found me on the front lawn. Kristen was trying to comfort me, and a bunch of partygoers had gathered around me, trying to figure out what was happening. There was a man and woman officer. The man was older and bald, but the woman only looked a few years older than me and looked worried. I tried to tell them what happened, but ended up just handing them the phone while choking out things like, she's been texting me since I was 16, and already went to the cops, and help him. As soon as the police figured out what was happening, they ran back to the patrol car and called it in. Hours later, using GPS, they managed to locate the other phone from which the texts were being sent to me. It was in a lake. They pulled the lifeless body of the drunk guy out of the icy water. The phone had been stuffed halfway down his throat. When the police identified him, it turned out I'd only met him once and we only had one friend in common. Even though I didn't know him, I went to his funeral and I listened to all kinds of things his friends and family said about him. So many people loved him. I felt terrible about what had happened. The guilt was unbearable, and even though everyone told me it wasn't my fault, I still blamed myself.